Welcome back to the Introduction to React series. In this video, we will talk about the Context API. Context allows passing data through the component tree without passing it as a prop at every level. This is usually used for global state, such as data about the currently authenticated user, teams, and other global preferences. In this video, I'll focus on one of the most common use cases for context which is storing data about the currently authenticated user. I have built a simple example, a page with a navigation and a section. When I press login, I want the greeting message to change from hello anonymous to hello my username. And I want the navigation to display hello my username and the logout button. I could achieve this by storing a state variable in my app component and passing it down as a prop. But as you can see, my app is composed of multiple components. I have a header component that is a composition of three components, logo, navigation, and user panel. This means I will have to pass my user state variable through header, then to user panel, and so on. This is called props drilling, and it is not ideal because you must pass props through multiple levels that don't need their data. It is extra work for the developer to trace the component tree and pass the props through it. And it also makes the code messy because more props are passed to each component. Context is a good solution to this problem because we need information about the current user in a couple of components and in a real application you would need that data at various levels in the component tree. To create a new context, I will create a new file for it and import the create context function from React. It accepts a single parameter, the initial value which will set to no for now. This function creates a React context object which has a couple of properties and functionalities. Let's import it in the app component. First of all, it has a provider object which is a component. You wrap child components with it and it accepts a value property. All the components that consume this context and are descendants of this provider will receive this value. If they are multiple providers, the context consumer takes the closest value, so you can have multiple providers overriding each other. Now, if you remember, I set an initial value when I used my create context function. That value will be used only if there is no provider available. I will pass an object as my value, which will have a name property set to John. Let's now use the context in the headline component. To use it as a consumer, we can use the use context hook. It accepts the context object which I can import from my context file. Now I have my context object right here and I can output the name in my headline or anonymous if user is no. I can do the same thing in my user panel component in the navigation. I'll show the name and logout button if available, like so. As you can see, I get my user data in all of my components, but it's read-only. I currently have no way of modifying it, and I really need it to be a state variable so that I can change the state from a logged out to logged in, and vice versa. Let's make a state variable in the app component and pass user and set user as the value in the provider. Now I have to edit all of my use context instances, as I'm now passing an array of two values to them. I can use the setUser method in my login component. Let's first set it up as a context consumer. And now I can add an onSubmit handler which will set user to an object with name John. Obviously, in a real application, you would have a server call here, and the user object will probably contain more data. If I refresh the page, I get hello anonymous, and I don't see my greeting and login button in the navigation. If I click log in, my user context has changed appropriately. The last thing to implement is the logout button, which I can implement similarly to the login button. I will add an onclick handler to it, and just set user to no. If I test it out, it works as expected. The state and provider can be stored in the context file. You can create a provider component here. In my case, I'll call it user provider, as this is the user context. This component will just return the user context provider component and store the user state. Now, I can just import that and use it in my app component. It's much cleaner and it separates concerns better. This wraps it for today's video. You learned how to use context to store the current user state. In the next video, I plan to explore routing. Stay tuned.